the rift, but uh, we'll have to see what TT are going to try and prioritize. Again, I think last time they might have been able to leave open both the Wukong and... I'm oh, sorry, they should have been able to get like something as an answer to the Wukong and the Zeri, but unfortunately uh, they banned the Wukong themselves, which they have done again. So they weren't able to kind of trade back and forth between those two picks. We'll have to see if TT are going to ban the Zeri as well here. Um, and yeah. see maybe if they want to try and opt in towards something like the Callista early for themselves. Yeah, we'll have to have a look because the Zeri has made it through all four games so far today. Uh, and it's been doing pretty well on that blue side. It has to be said, the Renata taken off this time though, maybe to try and deny the Callista combo. Wow, the Lee Simban. Okay, so maybe they're trying to with the Lee Simban go, hey, you got to take the Diego here, which then leaves the Zeri to go across. But honestly, I think... Zeri's just so strong at the moment. You take the Zeri, you kind of go, cool, we don't really care. If you get the Viego, Zeri's going to be the pick. Yep. Zeri locked in. First pick on blue side. Not surprising in the slightest there. Uh, and now to see what TT's priorities are going to be. Whether they want to match in the bottom line. Apparently the answer is yes straight away. Ezreal going to be locked in for buff. Baytron goes towards that Viego. Has been the priority jungle. when it comes not on the table. So Baytron getting comfort there. I would love to see Yukal play something like the Lissandra. I'd love to see that locked in before the next round of bans, just to set up a nice mid-jungle to try and control the game a bit better. Yeah, I am just going to point out as well that we have actually started to see Zeri a little bit in the mid lane. So if you really wanted to, JDG, you could actually go for like the Zeri mid and take the Kaiser for Hope and have a good matchup bot lane. But I'm just throwing it out there. I don't think we will see it. But yeah, especially with the Harry locked in, that's completely gone out the window. But so far, I think you take the uh, the jungle here for Kanavi, and you have an insane to, uh, like matchup across the board. Ari, wonderful at the moment. You get a good matchup in towards the Viego or something. Maybe even something like the Volley Bear if you really wanted to. We've seen a little bit in LEC, but we'll have to see what Kanavi wants to actually opt into. I want to see an Elise. I think Elise would be great. Ooh. Elise Ari was a classic combo. Uh, this has been an answer to Ezreal specifically. We've seen this quite a few times. Carsa played it. Uh, I think Kanavi might have been one of the players that played it as well. Um, but it's basically like, oh, Ezreal, you want to play safe at the back of the fight? Well, I press R on you. You ain't going nowhere. I will follow no matter what and then try and just one-shot him afterwards. So I like the pick from Kanavi. It has been an interesting pocket pick to watch over the split. See what Kanavi can do with it. Especially when you got the Ari to try and follow up with that. Even the long-range poke that is potentially there from Hope um, it makes it incredibly difficult for puff to have that wiggle room but i'm looking at tt here i'm seeing the the ezreal i'm seeing the lissandra i'm thinking hey where are you actually going to try and roam about to here is you if you get that opportunity so it feels like for shaoshang he needs to try and play some sort of carry um tool here otherwise you end up with, like falling behind in the uh bottom side of the map because ezreal won't have push against the zeri shaoshang will fall behind in the top side and that's why you can see jdg are banning away things that can actually do well with that pressure in the top lane like that Gwen and um, so then there aren't any big carry performances the Shoshan can put in from that position yeah so I've just double checked on the on the five pick I made a mistake actually it wasn't Carson that played it it was JJ I was thinking of who played it for EDG managed to get a win there uh, but there have been four Vi games so far Aki with two of them Kanavi with one of them and there's only been that one win for JJ. Vi has not actually looked very good in the LPL so far. And Kanavi's played it once and lost with it. So we'll have to see how the Vi pick is going to work out. I thought it had been more of a positive pick than this. But apparently I'm misremembering that one. We'll have to wait and see. Top lane bans galore though. As the Kale removed as well. Now we'll have to see where TT go next. I I don't like it, the, the lock in here at the Sichuani. I know Shoshang tends to be more of that like tank bruiser style but i really think you need some carry to try and play around in the early stages like if you cal is just going to sit there farming up it's not going to do particularly much for you um, and especially when you look at jdg now <clears throat> looks like they're going to take the sign for 369 and they've had a ton of opportunities to try and play around this bottom side of the map especially with yago getting pushed in mid then being able to lean down uh, you go for an Alistair or even a Nautilus here for missing. Great engage, great setup. I think Nautilus can work out super well in just having more follow-up point and click CC. But instead, they're going to go towards the Yumi because they have enough uh, dive here where the Yumi can just help facilitate. I feel like both teams wanted the Yumi, right? Like Yumi would have worked really nicely with TT's comp as well. Uh, it would have worked really nicely with JDG's. JDG that wants to grab that. There's going to be a Seraphin answered instead. Uh, down in that bottom lane for Southwind, which not really seen much Seraphine support as of late. Like, we've seen Seraphine bot lane a little bit, but 
typically like alongside a center or something like that. Yeah, and I mean, that's the, the kind of the thing is that like she can do relatively well as an enchanter, but the thing is she's still very susceptible to dive. And it is just a case of, well, if I'm gonna take Seraphine, I might take as well take Renata and have a little bit more of the um, uh, aggressive form of the Seraphine. But I mean, Seraphine can still work well here. Um, I'm just curious to see like what happens now or TT, I just don't really feel like you have anywhere you can really try and play around. You should have decent push on that bot side, but I think if you end up in like a 3v3 or even having the Ari with first roam, you just never really get to um, try and counteract the plays that JDG are going to try and make. That would be the big question. Can JDG be stopped in the early game? Can TT match what JDG are bringing to the table in that early game? Uh, so far, in game number one, they were able to match the early game, just once it came to the mid game, it all fell apart. The three Drakes early on, though, was very positive for TT. Now game two for JDG. I would love to see them kind of make a bit of a clearer show of it in the early game. Like, they certainly have the tools available to them. 369 can play that weak side with the Scion up there against the, the against the Sejuani. I love to see Kanavi getting aggressive. Like, Vi Ari is such an aggressive mid-jungle 2v2. And you've got that Zeri that you can get snowballing as well, but does feel like a lot of presence available from Yukal and Beitra. That's the two players that I'm looking at for TT that maybe can make their way onto the map. Um, I am laughing a little bit. Uh, we used to think about 369 on top esports as this like super carry that needed a ton of resources and wanted to just be at like pushing lanes and super aggro. It's basically like another version of Bin. And then you look at the champions that he's now been playing. It's like Scion, Gangplank, Sets, Kennings. I mean, we had a lot of Orn from him last split as well. It just feels like such a different leap from 369 since when we uh, joined the LPL even just like two years ago. Yeah, I mean, one thing that has been consistent is that Gangplank. If there's one thing yeah. 369 has always loved, it's the Gangplank. But uh, yeah, it does feel like... This is the kind of player now that has grown as a person from when he was on top esports. And it feels like he's really fit in with JDG. Like, to the point that oh, yeah. I really didn't expect. Like, when he first came over, I was kind of mocking JDG, saying this is the best trade deal in the history of trade deals yeah. maybe ever. And then Zoom collapsed on top esports and has now left that team. Whereas for 369, it's just been up and up. And now JDG looking like one of the better teams in the league. We're talking about players and history and stuff like that while Kanavi is literally taking chickens right in front of Beitron's face. Uh, interesting jungle start here from Kanavi, starting with a melee invade, basically. I mean, just a great trade deal for Kanavi, right? He gets an amazing lead yeah. from 369. Um, the fact that Shang wasn't a lane means that 369 doesn't actually miss out on a huge amount in this top lane. He's also a Scion. And um, Kanavi actually gets to disrupt Beishuan by taking away one of the most valuable camps in the early stages for getting your levels up and rolling. Yeah, and now he can go for his wolves and then path down towards his bottom side of his jungle to make sure Beishuan can't answer with an invade himself. So nice smart play coming out from Kanavi. Will be spotted though. Good little ward there from Yukal. Be able to make sure he knows what Kanavi's doing, where he's at, and just to set up for Beishuan to be able to play correctly. I mean, at the moment, though, Aishwan now starting to see if he can go for an evade across the way. Kanavi taken relatively low, and you do have push from Yukal in mid, so we'll have to see if Kanavi actually stays safe here. Yeah, Beitron, going to go for this red buff. He's level 3 versus Kanavi's oh, oh, level mistake. 2 here. Kanavi just spots it, flashes away. Now the bottom lanes start to move on over. Can Beitron actually grab this buff is the question. Both junglers with smite available. Kanavi... Deciding it's not a fight that he wants to go for in the end. will wrap around and go for his Krugs instead. I think if Beishwan had been a little bit more patient there, he actually might have been able to kill Kanavi. I don't think Kanavi was expecting Beishwan to be there. Especially as you see he had to burn his flash, but um, not going to be the case anyway. Hang on. And now TT will just move back up to the top side to take the rift trap. Yeah, the thing, the thing is they can get a Scuttler. Blue buff is up right now. Beishwan saw that Kanavi didn't have blue buff. Kanavi's down on Krugs. Beishwan... Off the back of losing his chickens, yeah. it's going to get a double buff over Kanavi. Like, I'm kind of mind boggled on how this has all come to pass. It felt like Kanavi started well with the invade, but apparently not. The thing is, though, what Kana Beishwan knows, Kanavi knows, because the blue buff for Beishwan's also off, but Kanavi looking bot side. Yeah. 
Hope might look for an engage here. Puff trying to move forwards aggressively. Southwind out of mana. Kanavi playing it slow, waiting in the brush. And once again, falling behind in CS while he waits for these plays to happen during the laning phase. Puff going to block the Q there for Southwind. But Southwind getting ignited. Forced to flash. It's going to be two summoners burnt on the side of TT. Beishuan, though, moving back in towards his top side. He's going to get his second round of Krugs. Or sorry, of Raptors, where you're looking at Kanavi. Hasn't done the blue buff. Hasn't actually been keeping up. So, again, we're seeing Beishuan coming out ahead in these early stages with the jungle pathing that he's opted for. Yeah, it feels like Kanavi having a really rough time of it. Yukal actually trading very well in the mid lane against Yagao as well. Feels like a positive start here for the side of TT. Kanavi decides to go for this blue buff anyway oh after boy. we just discovered how he doesn't have control anymore. Will get kicked out of the jungle, but will he survive? The answer is no with a flash forward from Beitron. Kanavi, no flash available. And one more auto. The Ruin King himself grabbing that one, and it's just in time for Drake to spawn. How clean is that? I mean, clean from TT, not so much from Kanavi. Not respecting, as you said, the push on bot, the push in mid, Beishuan moving back down towards his bot side. I think he was expecting Beishuan to have taken his top side camps reset and then come back in which traditionally would be what you'd see from the jungler there because you don't want to be out on the map for that long and um, without having taken your first reset you can even see base one still hasn't reset but because of that kanavi kanavi actually ends up on this bot side that little bit too long and puff does try and ward up so spots kanavi moving in here which is probably why base one actually decides as you can see he was actually pathing up towards his krugs but spots Kanavi on that ward and goes, okay, I actually don't want to fully clear my top side into a reset. I want to make sure I can punish Kanavi, who has no flash. And two right, Baytron with a really nice heads up play here. Kanavi thinking he'd read Baytron, but so far it's been Baytron reading Kanavi in this game. Very nice stuff from the TT jungler. And once again, Kanavi spotted. And this is one thing from TT. I'm actually very impressed by how much the whole team is working as a unit to make sure they've got wards on Kanavi, to make sure they know what Kanavi is doing all day. And that, but that's the thing, right? We've seen a lot that TT's early game can actually go well. Like, we saw it in the last game, but they weren't quite able to get it across the finish line. And we also saw it against, um, uh, sorry, LNG, where they were able to get these early leads, but then it was their mid-game decision-making that really hurt them. So, this is where I want to see if they can actually can keep this control and keep the ball rolling in their favor. I hope getting some damage down in the bottom side. Southwind is slowly but surely railed down. And Hope knows that he can take these trades because he's got the zoomies. He'll have the sustain to get back up. So nice trading coming out from Hope and missing that in the bottom side. And Ignite going to be coming up soon. Southwind going to have to be careful. But Kanavi drops a pink ward in Pixel Brush. Yuka clearing the blue side uh, pink ward in the top of the map. Will mean that Beitron can grab the Scudder Crab for himself, but at least Kanavi trying to find some vision control for himself and try and protect his camps a little bit. It's a thousand gold lead though so far for TT. I think the uh, vision control from TT has also been exceptional here. You've got two reds on the bot side, you've got control top side. Uh, TT are looking to go for Rift Herald, which is why JDG were like, okay, let's try and see if we can make a dive happen bot side while that control is going up towards the Rift Herald, but. The ward and vision control from TT, meaning that they're caught out. 369 could be in trouble here. It takes a pretty heavy trade, but doesn't look like Beitron's interested in moving towards that top side of the map just yet. Even with Herald coming up in 15 seconds, Beitron is actually pathing down right now. I think he knows that this dive might occur. He might know, because Kanavi's literally stood on a ward currently. Uh, Beitron wants to move over and wants to make count of play. Yukal moving over as well. Kanavi realizes something's up and will back away in the end. So I think this will all turn to naught. Yeah, and again, Beishwan, a nice job here to try and cover the plays from Kanavi. And I mean, you can just now actually, well, push in a bot side and still go for the Rift Herald. Like you're still super far ahead on Beishwan and even on mid lane at the moment with just the amount of raw CC you can bring to the fight. So they aren't in a rush to take the Rift Herald. They can still get that off of these uh, next few passages of play. done here and a bit of denial from TT. Herald on the map though still. We'll see which team is able to to find an opportunity there. Reset coming out from Puff by the looks of things. Uh, we'll see if he moves up towards that top side of the map or whether or not he's just going to go back towards that bottom lane. It looks like it's going to be the latter of the options as Yagao 
Just looking to try and sweep any vision away. And I think he's going to be happy with his discovery that TT basically have no vision up on that top side of the map. And perhaps will give Kanavi a window to try and fight for a hell. Well, I mean, Kanavi still sitting like, apparently, as you can see, a thousand gold behind on the left hand side of your screen. Plus the fact that he's only just hit his level six, whereas Beishuan has hit that level seven. I'm a little bit nervous if JDG are actually trying to go for this. And TT, they're expecting JDG co to contest. Certainly are. JDG with a control ward there. There's no vision actually on the Herald from the side of TT just yet. Space One actually channeling a recall. Hope's moved on up though. And that should be enough to dissuade any kind of contestant coming out from TT. Yagao needs to be careful though. That's going to be CC. Lay it down. Doesn't even have to use the cleanse though. Actually just takes a bit of damage. But ultimately, he's happy with that one. Especially if the Herald is taken by his jungler, which it will be. Kanabi grabs that for himself. So all things considered, great stuff here from JDG. Puff will get a play though. Puff will maybe even get a little bit more, but Ezra not exactly the quickest terror taker in the West. Hey. And uh, oh. the thing is, when you look at the fact that Yukal kept his ultimate there, at the, initially I was like, oh, they didn't layer the CC properly. But I actually think that was a good call from um, Yukal. As you rightly pointed out, the cleanse still available for Yagao. So instead, just getting the ultimate, and now they're looking for the play. Yagao, the re gank coming through. <laughs> I mean, he had cleanse, but uh, just gets destroyed so quickly. No opportunity to use it there. Could have cleansed the Ring of Frost, but then you're going to get hit by the ult anyway, right? So he's trying to save that, but then the ult basically just killed him on the spot. So bit of a tough one for Yagao. With the back-to-back -back ganks there. Goes down. Another advantage for TT. They have the gold lead right now. And Kanavi with this Herald needs to try and turn that around. And that's the thing, the early mid jungle from TT has been the stronger one in this game. It has just been the fact that, like, when you get to the mid game, TT don't really know what they're doing. And now, you've got TT pushing in onto the dragon, whereas JDG moving members up to topside. They really want to get some gold back in favor of Hope, but Kanavi has company. Kanavi could be in trouble here, but has the Q available. We'll be able to actually... Yukal's here. In towards the crooks. I don't know if that was the direction you wanted to be queuing on that one. Does have a Yumi on his shoulder. Just gets locked up. Ice for days. Flashes but chased down by Shaosheng. A Kanavi just way too aggressive on the play. And the thing is, you're not even going to get much elsewhere in the map. I mean, 369 will get a play bot side, but Shaosheng can TP in to cover this or even TP into the mid lane that's being pushed in. But Yukal is there. So the fact that you had the, t the TP from Puff to help get to the top side means you've always got the numbers advantage for TT. So JDG, I mean, this is what we're talking about, falling behind in the early stages, but still just trying to push that bit too far forward, not respecting what the enemy can do. And we see it here. Kanavi sees Shaoshang, sees Southwind, knows that both Puff and um, Yukal have their TPs, but even Yukal just comes straight in off the reset and is able to lock up Kanavi for yeah. days. I think I think they must have not realized Yukal was that's the only logical explanation to me because Hope was cut off and so he couldn't join in. And it, I don't know. It felt like it was a 3v3 until Yukal was there. And Yukal was the only one where it wasn't like really... He didn't channel a TP. Yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That's the only logic I can draw to even explain that play from Kanavi. Bit of a weird one. Um, but one thing I want to mention quickly, Dagda, is the fact that... So far, JDG this split, 0% win rate went behind at 15 minutes. And right now, it's a gold lead for TT as we get towards that 15-minute mark. That charge has certainly closed the gap. 600 as 369 actually has to flash. Dodges away from the flail, though. Stun comes on in. Kanavi needs to protect his top laner, but won't be able to. And that's a huge chunk of gold going into the pocket of Beach one as well. And now, that gold lead back up to 1,000 again. Kanavi spotted on his crooks as well here. Yukal has ult, has the stuns. Oh no. Kanavi, this is two times in a row where he will die for Krugs. Taken down. He's trying to get as many crooks as he can before he goes. But he will not get enough. Hope in the meantime, get some solo time on these tower plates. Uh, we'll be sharing them with missing ultimately. But at the end of the day, still a bit of gold for JDG. At least they get something. But it feels like TT kind of have their number right now. Oh, we actually just saw what started that in the bottom side for JDG. 369 tried to go for the all-in on Shaoshang, but Shaoshang flashing away from the ult and the 369 was overextended and gave that opportunity for TT. So Shaoshang kind of baiting in 369 a little bit, but as you say now, TT, they're the ones that control the map. 
two minutes until their potential third dragon. Um, Rift Hell will be up in about two minutes time as well. So you've always got the option TT to try and lean into that as uh, on the same vein. But I'm really curious now as to what TT are going to do because turret plates have just dropped. They haven't actually managed to get any of these towers down. That seems like the next big objective for this team is trying to get this map open and in their favor. Yeah, can they run away with things now is the big question. Now, unfortunately for them, JDG have taken the tower. Because if not, right now, Dacta, they would be on track for a perfect yeah. game. Because there's five kills to zero. There's two drakes to zero. Everything going pretty well for TT. Although, we do have to remember, Canard could get the first Herald as well. So, wouldn't ever be a perfect game. But even still, a great game for TT. And a team that we came into the series saying, look, this is a team with some positives to talk about. This is a team that have managed to make things happen recently. But now trying to defend this top tier one as JDG look for a dive here. They're going in, they're making a play. Final chapter comes across, gets the lock up onto Southwind. Everfrost is there, but he has a stopwatch to buy himself some space. Will actually get away with his life, but now Hope using the cleanse, keeping oh, himself safe Puff. as Puff now arrives on the play. Yukal doesn't follow the Claw of Doom though. Will just be the tower taken for JDG. Okay, nicely done for JDG, oh. but Shaoshang, they're going to find 369, but in the 1v1, I'm actually not sure if Shaoshang wins this fully. Also, what is with the vision control from Shaoshang? Two control was this bottom side. You'd expect that that was the red side jungle, honestly, with that kind of vision dominance. 30 seconds on the Drake, because we just have a wet noodle fight between the tanks. What looked like an assassination attempt, but uh, 369, he was wearing a bulletproof vest. <laughs> I don't even know if it's a, a bulletproof vest. It felt like it was more like nerf darts that were being shot, you know? <laughs> There's no real damage on either side, but... Uh, yeah, JDG at least get terror for themselves. I mean, they're keeping the gold lead relatively close, and this is kind of what we're talking about for TT. What really needed to happen there was more of a case of, hey, Shaoshang push him, boss, rotate towards mid, we look for the dive on mid terror. Use the fact that Shaoshang is nice and tanky, but... Uh, instead, JDG get the tower on top side without much of a response from TT. TT, though, getting Dragon will lose Rift Child. So, again, we're getting a lot of trades back and forth. We certainly are, but still feels positive for TT in basically all of these trades. You know, the Herald is nice, and that'll help crack down that uh, mid tier one in favor of JDG. And maybe buying that space will help JDG get onto the map. But. Honestly, right now, feels like all of the advantages go in the way of TT. I like the comp. I like the way that their team fights are going to work out. They've got an Ezreal that's just scaling up throughout things. I feel like a lot of this is going to be on Hope and 369. They feel oh, like players that can have an impact, but he flashes onto the stun. Tries to get over the wall, but there's just too much ice. The problem is, ice champions don't do any damage. So he's still full HP after all of that. And now oh, Shaoshun getting chased down as well by Kanavi. Kanavi no longer with 0% kill participation. The whole of JDG no longer with zero. As they finally get an opportunity to be aggressive themselves. They'll go for a mid-tier one. They didn't even need the Herald for it. Yeah, no damage to follow up on Shaoshang's engage. And it was a great engage. But they just couldn't lock up Hope long enough before he's able to hop over the wall. We'll see it here. You get a fantastic engage from Shaoshang. Just Hope flashing into it as well. Sheer panic. But there's no follow-up in time. Puff can't get into a position to get there. Southwind and Yukal are both out of the spot as well. So you get over the wall for Hope. The heating comes through from the Yumi. And with everyone on JDG collapsing, JDG finally managed to get some kills in their favor. Now, this Lissandra and uh, Lissandra and Sichuani combo is pretty disgusting, honestly, with the amount of CC that they throw out. But with Yagao and Hope both running cleanse and then a Yumi to deny a lot of the burst damage, doesn't actually feel that effective. The fact that Hope survives that with everything pretty much hitting him as well is kind of mental to think about and a little bit scary for TT moving forward in the game. Yeah, and you can see that Yukal's even opted in towards the Yandri's Anguish instead of the Everfrost we usually get. Um, so it just means you don't even have like more of that lockdown. I think that's fair from Yukal with, as you say, the amount of CC between Southwind, Shaoshang, and Yukal himself. But it does mean that like in those scenarios where maybe you just need a little bit more time to finish people off, you don't quite get it. JDG now, with that play though, got the uh, the control of the map that they needed. They got the mid turret, and now they can actually start to push these waves in, get control of the jungle on either side. And again, we see TT fumbling that bit in the mid game. Yeah, bit of a bit of a disaster for them. I will say JDG 
in uncharted territory though remember zero percent win rate when they're behind the 15 minute mark so far this split if they manage to win this game they will reverse that statistic they will find themselves a win while behind 15 minutes which would be uh kind of a big moment for them honestly because the way that i read this team right now is that if they're ahead they win if they're behind they struggle Shang though caught in the bottom side here cannot be going to follow up on this one as well. Shaoshan is pretty tanky, but with the amount of CC coming on through, it doesn't seem to matter. 369 happens to just tank tower all day long. Hope with a kill for that one. Now the rest of the team moving oh forward as Puff <laughs> went way too aggressive on that one and Hope just annihilates him. Yeah, Hope playing perfectly in the edge of terror range here, getting a good amount of damage down. Beishwan is going to push in the mid lane, but you're not going to win a Viego versus the Rift Herald and several members of JDG on this bot side. Even look at Yagao pushing in top. Yep, that's going to be a tier 2 taken in the bottom side. Baytron moving in. So uh, Yukal doesn't follow up on his engage tool there. Looks like JDG will get away with the play on the bottom side. Yagao not deciding to try and split push on the tower. He's going to settle for Krugs instead. Just going for as much gold as he can and gold denial from the side of What TT. is this? A TP coming through from Shaoshang. TT aren't done with the play just yet. 369 tank and a beach one. Okay, now they are done with Why? the play, whether they Why? like it or not. Why were they not done with the play? I don't understand why they weren't done with the play. The play was over. And now JDG get the reset. They'll come out in time for Dragon. Like TT, and he should get the, the waves in order ahead of this. But I still think you're going to be an okay spot as JDG to try and contest this. You should certainly hope so. JDG should be able to get themselves in position. As uh, we're taking a look at how this all started. I, we saw that live, I'm pretty sure. Um, yeah, we did. Yeah. <laughs> they got him. They got him. Good stuff. Here we go. Stun comes out on 369. He is pretty hard to kill with the zoomies on top of him. And the final chapter scares everyone away from TT. Puff down to half HP somehow as Yagao getting onto Yukal here, who keeps himself safe with the stopwatch. And now the rest of the team moving in. Kanavi's on the back line and Puff's gone down. Kanavi flashing out safety. Beitron being chased down by Hope. He has no fear whatsoever, just ignoring Shaoshan. Now turning to blast him with his minigun and just chunk through that health bar. Shaoshan powerless in this 1v1, except it's a 3v1 because Kanavi and Missing helping Hope take over the game. And yes, TT, you got the three Drakes. You did it in game one as well. But once we get to the mid game, JDG come alive. And Hope didn't even have to use the ultimate in that. He only just popped it there at the end. Um, Hope just chasing people down. JDG looking confident in that fight. And again, that's what we're talking about, right? <clears throat> TT, they invest everything coming off the back of that play on bot side to try and keep JDG out of the pit, but JDG easily able to contest. You already had the positioning here. They've got really strong front line and everything ends up dumped into 369 and attempted to get onto Yagao, but with that gone, Kanavi has great access to Puff. No one really there to try and save him and Hope is completely untouched again. Doesn't even have to use his ult. He's just like, hey, I'm just gonna uh, just skate my way through this fight nice and handily. Had the Yumis there, the Yumis with the Zoomies to help him out. And it's just an easy fight for JDG. Chunks through Shaoshan. I mean, if Shaoshan can hit a flail, maybe he can escape with the slow, but Hope is just so fast with the zoomies. Like, how do you ever escape from him? And now, I mean, look at the damage, right? Great stuff coming out from Hope. But now it becomes difficult for TT. Because before we were talking about how they were 5 and 0, look at that perfect game. Well, they're no longer perfect on Drakes. They're not perfect on Towers. They're not perfect on Kills. And uh, they're not perfect on the goal difference either because JDG have found themselves a lead in this to one. they're their mothers. And that's all that really matters. Now, yeah, Gail, though, going to see if he can try and uh, send them home to their mothers as he's sitting on the side here trying to see if he can play around the vision. Maybe look for a pick here. Yeah, we'll see if they can find that pick. 369 in the wings. Shaoshang moves over, though. and Looks like JDG going to back away for the time being. As, uh, that's going to be a true shot barrage used to scout this Baron out. But there's a control ward now in the back of the pit. So TT will have full information. Yeah, And again, I think JDG going to try and take this one a little bit slow again. Make sure they can get their waves in order. And um, Yagao yeah, taking blue buff to then move up towards his top side to start pushing in. And if they can get both mid and top pushing at a similar time, then you can start to look at getting vision control in and around this Baron area. And we saw how devastating that was to TT in the last game where... He didn't really have anyone that could deal with the the ability to face check. But this oh. time around, they do have Xiao Shang who can actually just poke his head in to see 
what is going on around this top side of the map. I thought TT were going to try and make an attempt onto Yagao there, but it looks like the resets come on through. Yagao will be fine. It's 369 wants to grab himself a Gromp. Kanavi finally going to look at trying to clear some of this vision around Baron, get deep vision in as well. The Sweeper will spot this ward. Yaga will be able to help him clear that out. And now into the pit they go. JDG getting complete control. This is just such good Baron setup as well, right? Going around, trying to clear as much vision as possible. There is one ward there. That hasn't been packed two wards, one just outside of Raptors as well. They haven't been cleared. But generally speaking, complete blindness in that Baron pit now. And we'll see if TT can reestablish any vision. Yeah, I'm not the biggest fan of the lane assignments from TT, though. I really think he should have Yukal on the bot side. Um, I know that Shaoshan can't deal with the push as well from Yago, but you really need someone who's tanky because of this. Oh my god, Yukal's in trouble. Turns into a giant icicle, but you know what? It's this summer's day, and JDG, they love to gobble an icicle up at this point. Shaoshan underneath the tower trying to get Kanavi, but Kanavi survives the zoomies. Keep him alive. One HP, and Kanavi walks away. That's twice this game, and now Hope has been stacking up this entire time. Hasn't even used his ultimate just yet. Hasn't needed to, uh, but kind of regretting that decision, it turns out. And now it's a double kill coming through for Buff. Baytron gets a charm as well as he looks for more on the back side of the play. Oh, no. Baytron cutting them down, missing alone in the world as Baytron will get the reset and a double kill. And it's all gone pear-shaped for JDG. TT keep themselves alive. I mean, it had looked good for JDG, but Yukal bought so much time on the dive. And now TT, with everyone up and available, are going straight for the Baron. And when you've got that Baron buff and the soul in a minute's time, this is going to be so hard for JDG now to contest. Yeah, that's a Baron taken. And TT in a fantastic position off the back of what was essentially just over-aggression from the side of JDG. Yeah, Kanavi using the Assault and Battery onto Yukal means he gets the ult. You then get the lock up underneath the Terror, but I mean, you're only four members strong here with that Terror still waiting away on you the whole time. Kanavi's completely out of the equation and 369 just isn't able to get here fast enough before there's too much damage done to so many of the backline. Selfwind as well, great positioning in the bush to get that lock up that you need because he nails it onto Yagyo and then with the, uh, the, uh, the Beast, whatever the E is called, uh, hitting on towards both of the carries as well. But now we're back. And as we said, 10 seconds until Inferno. Yeah, we'll have to see if TT can grab themselves this soul. They're on three Drakes already. Weird re-engage in the last one from JDG there. It's TT now in position. Yukal waiting off towards the top side of the play. He wants to try and get onto Hope. But Hope's playing from the bottom side instead. Shaosheng, the target is Kanavi's in the pit right now, but he's in too early. He's CC'd up, flashes, gets onto Puff instead. They're looking for the fight. They're not even looking for the Drake. Hope stacking up on the backside of everything, but his teammates are falling. 369 trying to be the bouncer, trying to protect his AD carry. Yukal comes in with a charm lands. Hope has to cleanse, has oh. to try and survive. Gets Puff down, moly. looking for Southwind next. Can Hope carry the fight? Baytron moving in. But the stun is dodged from Hope still There's going no strong. Way. Still has the zoomies. Still stacking oh. up. But he's taken down. Missing alone. And TT, it was a close to disaster. But TT will get themselves the Infernal Soul. And that probably seals the deal here for TT. I need to take a rewatch of what happened exactly here. Because I can see Kanavi and Yako hop onto Puff. But it just looked like there was no damage to actually take down Puff. And... Yeah, Gao and Kanavi then end up being caught out in the mix. So I want to see here, because Puff does get caught out on the top side of this fight. And I was like, okay, this is actually great here for JDG. Kanavi gets there, he gets a knock-up. But you can see just no damage actually coming out on towards uh, Puff. Even the exhaust coming out, Puff survives. And because of that, there's just so much damage still left here for TT. Um, and Hope trying his damnedest to clear out everything, but you've got an AD carry, a mid laner, and even an enchanter support just trying to nail you every time. And Yukal just waiting for the W to come back off cooldown before he goes in to make sure there's nowhere for Hope to escape to. Tough fight there for Hope. He tried so hard with missing on his shoulder, but at the end of the day, fantastic for TT. Baytron now trying to escape, using it all very oh, early on. There's a charm from Yagao. Yagao has to survive as well, though. There's one for zero. 
Konami going so deep on the back of the play. Southwind will fall, Shaoshang alone. Puff knocked up in the meantime. Hope with a double kill. How do you lose the Infernal Soul what? and then take a fight so handily? Puff will go down. Hope with a triple kill. And he is a new hope for JDG with a quadra because that's the fourth Star Wars film. Wait, is that the game? JDG, they've got the push. They can just run through. Yukal needs the reset, and it's Yukal versus the world, but I think JDG just ends. And I think Yagao might have just grabbed himself an MVP with that engage there, making the pick happen onto Beichuan. Yukal has to do what he can, but it's not going to be enough here. Trying to clear the way for the cannon. Will actually go down. Oh, maybe it is enough. 369 is going to use his death pass. A it's a pentakill. Hope got the pentakill somehow and then died afterwards. It's <laughs> pure chaos, but TT live on. What is today, Mudge? What is happening in these games? How do we have Yukal with the hero play? Saving the game by killing the minions, hope getting a penta, and then instantly dying. You've got the Inferno Soul for TT, and they're losing fights. They've got a Baron, and they're losing fights. I don't know what's going on anymore. But as you say, MVP performance here from Yankel predicts the movement on the charm, gets the engage onto base one. And yes, Puff has some damage, but when you've got hope in this position with the three items that completed Infer Infinity Edge as well, great engage from 369 to get on towards Puff in the back line. This is where JDG can actually find some semblance of comfort in the fights. Falling at the end for the quadrant there for Hope. And then, uh, you know, managing to get a penta as Yukal just clearing the way. You can see him going and using that ult to clear out the minions. 369 deciding he's going to be the one to tank. And then a Hope tank the tower somehow. I think it was because um, oh, 369, 369 died, died under the tower. So then Hope ends up taking the damage. So a little oh. bit messy at the end of that. I think Hope a little bit surprised he got the uh, pentakill as well. But you still have Inferno Soul on TT. They're not as spread out this time. I think the biggest problem is still who kills 369 if he's able to play into the front line. Because honestly, Beishuan doesn't have the damage, especially with the abilities gone. You're in Ezreal, you're in Lissandra. So as long as JDG can play this front to back, I think they might just have it just with the scaling that they have on their composition. Yeah, we'll have to see. And Infernal Soul certainly be doing work. Elder not up for another 2 minutes and 20 seconds, but Baron will be in 40 seconds. Dagda, talk to me. How do TT approach this? How do they find the win that they're so desperately clawing for here in game two. It has to be with a clever dive on towards Hope. Yukal needs to try and make that play happen. You don't have cleanse available for Hope, but Mikhail's is on Missy. So you still have to try and contend with that lockup. But if you get Hope, you have a hope of winning this fight, TT. In the meantime, though, look at Kanabi and Yagao. They're just trying to push. They're not really interested in fighting at this point. 369 going to just wander by as Hope proxies the wave to deny any chance of priority from TT yeah, look here. Look at Yago. Exactly. Yago pushing down in this bottom side. He's just oh, going to go no. for an inhib tower. Now the recall's trying to come on through, but 369 is just going to play spoiler. Him and Kanavi are going to stop the ports as Hope has moved down to the bottom side. They're just going to go for a 3v5. They are sacrificing their lives to make this play happen. We've had two resets coming through from TT. Shaoshang and Yukal trying to protect in the base. They've cleared the wave, but now oh, in the we're mid lane, fight it out. that means JDG can find themselves a numbers advantage. 369 still going strong. Kanavi still alive here. Yagao oh. goes forward, put flashes out to the back of the fight. Yagao with one onto Patron. Hope jumping onto Puff in the backside of the fight. Southwind trying to survive, but Puff is cut down. And now Hope will look for more onto Southwind. Shaoshang next on the chopping block. And it's going to be more multi-kills for Hope as JDG. It may not be a clean game, but damn it if they don't have Mojo. I mean, 12 and 3 on Hope. The Jeez. fact that this magic is somehow coming through for JDG. This was a 2-0 for them. But what in the hell just happened? I really don't know, but Hope <laughs> does. Hope knows everything. Hope is an absolute monster in this game on Zeri. That was something else. What a shot call as well to play the bottom side of the map. But Kanavi and 369 are missing to just jump in to, what was it? 3v5 to start with. Then some recalls came on through and just managed to survive for so long with the zoomies. It was just, that was mental. Yeah, I mean, Hope playing really on a knife's edge there, as you say, launched himself in, but I mean, the decision-making all over the place was absolutely insane this game. Like, you get the team fight win for TT, 
at the dragon. They get the Infernal Soul, instantly lose the next fight. JDG then throw at the Nexus, try to end the game, <laughs> and then TT come back out, still end up losing the next fight. We kind of already pointed out, like, just the scaling on JDG did help them a lot, but this was all over the place. This was absolutely bonkers. Yeah, this was this was a wild one. This was a very strange game, but honestly, a fun one. I enjoyed yep. watching that complete chaos. Like, TT got the soul. TT won the fight to get Infernal Soul. And then from that point, JDG was just like, you know what? We're never giving you a fair fight again. We are never letting you just front to back 5v5 us. We're going to play different sides of the map. We're going to play this creative style, play for picks with Yagao, and then play for... I don't even know what that final play can be described as, but play for just shenanigans is the answer, apparently. <laughs> yeah, The shenaniganery, as you'd like to put it, was absolutely <laughs> yeah. sky high in this one. And I think, like, the... I think you bring up a good point, which is the fight at the end. Because it ends up being the 3v5 uh, in favor of TT, they think, okay, well, we've already got a ton of damage off. We'll just start getting the resets in. And there's no way that then, as long as we can collapse on them, that they can win the fight. But the thing yeah. is, Hope is able to get out of there so quickly. Um, and same with Yagao, that they actually turn on to the three members of tt so fast that the rest of the tt just can't catch up like lissandra is super late to that fight there's only puff that's the real damage dealer that you have to worry about so once they get on towards puff and kill him the rest of that fight becomes so much easier and you've even got the lockup from kanavi to make sure that happens so um a strange game i mean jdg had a good call at the end but i think there was a lot left to be desired throughout the course of the early game and i think that's why we're kind of nervous saying that jdg you know how good are they because a lot of the times it's still the this weird wacky early game that's causing them issues yeah i mean it, it was a weird game that is for sure and jdg certainly not making it perfect but showing that showing the reason that a lot of people believe in this jdg team right is that they have star power like when you look down this roster everybody is a phenomenal player everybody on this team is you know one of the better ones in their role i'm not going to say they've got the five best players in the league you know or anything like that but certainly a powerful player in every single role and it feels like they ha they have that veteran c and that shot calling ability to just make everything happen you know missing actually having a really good game for himself as well 100 kill participation there on the yumi he was a part of everything that happened and i mean we're gonna have to see exactly where um jdg ended up lining you know, up right because i think this was a uh, a fun series from them we saw bits back and forth but they still have a lot of time to try and get the consistency 